Hi, Simon here, GM8 NYB, continuing with my CL100 restoration. I've started doing a, some of the wiring inside um, bit by bit, so I shall show you how far I've got. Uh, many concentrated on valve 10 and valve 9, which is the BFO and the uh, detector valve. And I put one a couple of small boards in, quite squashed as you'll see. Right here, let's see if we can point that. These are the two boards. There's one here in the side. I'm not sure you can see that with that. No. Nope. Uh, take the chassis a little. This is the one of the boards that I mounted that in the side where it's going to fit. This is the other little board, and it, this little board. This is valve nine and the heat detector now that sat there like that it's very, I notice it's very close to some of the uh, pins here so I have to be careful I might just stand that off a little now over the whole lot of this is its screen it's got two cutouts a small cutout here which could work not here so it also has a couple of holes in the back here and I think it had a piece of Paxlin bolted in probably to uh, protect the back of that so what I'm going to do now is see how it fits obviously this is not bolted down but just get an idea where it goes some of these cables I've put in from the switch I've mounted I've just got heat shrink on here but I'm waiting to get proper tubing so I just wanted to see what it looked like these aren't actually wired into anything yet. And this is the wiring I've done as tight as I can here. Now I discovered some of these valve pins, although I thought they were clean, they weren't very clean when I tried to solder them. So I had to scrape them and give them a little a good scrape and clean up to get the solder to adhere. Right, very tricky, but I think once I get that bolted down properly, these three capacitors at the back here, they go over uh, inside, I should say. And that sits in there. I'm going to push it all the way down. A couple of holes there. Now, these are the coaxes. And a couple of wires. So basically, that's where that sits. But still a few more bits and pieces to do on that. Now, this, these are the three coaxes. The, um, Two from the valve, one from the board. Uh, they go to IFG5 and one goes through a capacitor mounted on the valve 7 here. I know on the original uh, receiver they had these running in tubes which I'm going to do. I have one of the tubes here. This is the tubes they ran in. This is ah, very brittle, not flexible anymore. I'm obviously not going to use that, but I've got some sleeving coming this size and 6mm. What I thought I'd do, which I've not done for a long, long time, not since I was <laughs> an apprentice and got taught this stuff when we were repairing equipment. This is lacing cord, it's not wire. This is actually nylon, but I remember the stuff I used to have was, it was a waxed nylon. This is like PVC, I should say. Uh, I'm not sure you can see there. It's like a running stitch. So I'm not going to go all the way to the end. I thought I'd just keep my hand in. It looks quite neat if you get it done properly. So it's just a case of a bit fiddly. And then twisting that back on itself to make like a lock knot, a locking stitch. Feed that through. Try and get the same distance there. And then, basically that's it. Uh, hard to see, it looks a bit neater. I'm not sure if it's gonna come out on this little camera. So I'm gonna just continue that to the end and that's where I'll go into the tubing I'm gonna put in here. This I need to get mounted in here. As I say, it's very close to the valve pins. Obviously that's the way it was originally, but uh, I'd be happy just to mount it slightly higher. So I'm gonna use longer screws and I put some spaces in there. There's plenty of room at the top of this. The back of here is the 
rectifier. I've got to wire this up yet. There's a few more pieces, uh, resistors to wire up. These are from this mode switch. They go onto here. And there's a couple of capacitors. One is the um, 25 UF goes in there. It was above the transformer, so I'm not putting these in yet. Also, this one is the one that goes in the bottom. Very close to the transformer, so it will restrict my space for the moment. So I'm not going to put those in yet. I've been putting some of these capacitors in to wire them up. Here's one here. I've been using these little these copper washers. And what I'm using these for, if you remember when I did these capacitors. I made a little hole in the bottom and I put a uh, uh, I put the wire at the bottom of the pasta through and just soldered it tightly, uh, wrapped it around as tightly as possible. So I put, uh, to stop it wobbling over, uh, I've cut a slot in these copper washers and these should mount in quite nicely. Put this in there. And then put the nut and bolt on the back and it goes in quite tight. I've also been checking them as I put them in here. The last thing you want to do is not find they don't work, so they should be should show for you as a good connection. Right, 100 NF, which is point 0.1. That's fine on the capacitor, but I'm just wondering if it's air. So what I've been doing is putting in a lead. One of them. Again, sticking that on there. Can't read it upside down. But it should read 100 NF. 100.2. So it's making contact with the chassis, which I'm happy with. So I've done that with every capacitor I've put in. And checking it as I go. Right, so far so good. I'm going to continue with this uh, slowly over the next few uh, days and weeks or whatever. The other thing I like to use, I noticed this wire, I've got this wire, it's hookup wire. And it's 20AWG silicon wire. This, uh, Oh, the feedback. I, can't remember what it was. I think you get five meters on each roll. So that's quite handy in the little box. It doesn't always run as easy as it looks. But what the nice thing about this is, I used to use wire strippers for it, and like very thin wires like this, sometimes I'd remove the core, even the very smallest wire strippers I've got. But with this silicon stuff, fingernails is good enough, and you don't take the, it comes off very easy. Um, you see the end there, and then just twist it up, and it doesn't take any of the inner cores out, so I'm quite happy using this. This is quite a high temperature, I can't remember the spec for the temperature now. So that's the wiring I've been using for interlinking all the, the components. Right, so that's how far I've got so far. Still, uh, I've been following this drawing, I mentioned it in the last video. This is out of the manual is a HT drawing. So I've been marking off the it upside down. <laughs> I've been marking off each wire I put in. I've only done the bottom half. This top half is all on this side, so I need to mount the other boards. But these come from these are the wires to the other two boards from the mode switch. Right, one other interesting thing I found on the internet. Um, somebody else had found it on on a, on a website, and I looked at one of those little pictures of a ship called the Balulu, and it was converted in the 40s by um, the Royal Navy. It was, it was a cruise ship originally, a steam cruise ship, and they wanted to use it as a landing craft or a landing craft um, base, really floating. Uh, floating base. So they converted it for mainly communications. Now I got those photographs and I downloaded them and they're all in black and white but it shows you in one of the radio rooms there a 
They've got a whole pile of these against the wall and all the operators on it. I think it was into service. I think it had the Navy's Royal and the Royal Air Force. And uh, maybe the Royal Observer Corps all operating these receivers. And I put it through a colour uh, enhancing program or one that turned black and white pictures into colour. So I'll, I'll try and stick them on this video see, so you can see what they're like. Right, that's so far so good. I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to try and get that mounted. The, uh, I'll try and get that mounted in the next day or two. I want to get into this valve here, which is the audio valve, audio output valve. I want to get that wired up before I cram it all in. I'll leave the lid off until the very end. So there we go. That's a little progress I've made so far, and um, I hope you like it. So I'll. Uh, Show these pictures if I can. Right, thank you for watching and catch you next time.